GST collected on sales means the business receives money. So why is that not a revenue? To answer that, we're going to look at how does GST work. So we've got this in some other videos, but we'll need to consider it here as well. During the month, a business has a lot of transactions which include GST, and we assume that money collected is a liability. It's going to go on this big pot called GST clearing liability. Um, why is that assumed to be a liability? Well, that's the answer we're going to get to at the end of this video. But basically what happens is when the business collects that money from the government, uh, or for the government, it doesn't belong to the business. The business gets it from customers. So for example, if we make a sale of $2,000 plus $200 GST, that $200 from the customer is going to us as the business, but it doesn't belong to us. It belongs to the government. So what that actually does is increase our liability and we now owe the government $200. We might make another sale of $1,000 plus $100 GST. That $100 of GST that we've collected doesn't belong to us. It belongs to the government, not to the business. So we're going to increase the amount we owe the government to $300. However, the way the government set up the system is that, well, you don't have to give the government the whole $300 because the business might have also paid some GST. So if it's paid $500 for fuel plus $50 GST, $50 can come out of this pot here, and we only owe the government $250. And if we paid for the rent of $1,000 and the rent had GST, we don't have to give the government $250. We can take out the $100 of GST we've already paid on the rent. And so in this situation, at the end of the month, the business would owe the government $150 of money. What is that for? It's for GST. And when we owe money, that's a liability, so liabilities go up on the credit side, so we owe the government $150. What we want to remember, though, is that sometimes a business ends up paying more GST than it collects. So, same situation, we'll just change the numbers. We've got a sale of $1,000 plus $100 GST. $100 increases our liability to the government. We've got a second sale for $500 plus $50 GST, so now we owe the government $150. But... What about if we end up paying a lot more GST than we collect this month? What about if we pay $1,000 for rent plus $100 GST? Well, all of a sudden, our GST liability has gone down to $50. What if we also pay $1,500 advertising plus $150 GST? This is going to go down from 50 It's going to go down so far, it's actually going to go below zero and become a negative. What does that actually mean? It actually means at the end of the month, the government owes the business money government will give the business a refund of $100. That's actually an asset. So we would recall that as a debit to GST clearing. So that's how GST works. And in this case, instead of a liability, the business would have an asset. But let's get back to our question. So why isn't the money that we collect on for GST on a sale, why is that not revenue? Let's use an example. The business collects two, uh, charges $2,000 for a sale and also collects $200 GST. So we said that's actually going to increase a liability, which would be a credit. Let's look at the rest of it, though. We'd also have a sale of $2,000. That's a revenue. So revenues go up on the credit side. Every, every credit needs a debit. So where are our debits going? They're going into cash. We've got $200 and $2,000 for a total of $2,200. What's important to realize is that they're for different things, though. $200 of this money is for a liability and $2,000 of this money is for a revenue. Why is this $200 GST a liability and not a revenue? It all comes down to our definition. So every element of accounting, whether it's an asset, liability, revenue, expense, or owner's equity has a definition. So let's go through the definition of a liability. It has to be a present obligation. Is this $200 an obligation? Yes, it is. It's an obligation to pay the government back. So that is true. Secondly, a liability has to arise from past events or transactions. Is that true? Yes, it is. We made a sale of $2,000 plus GST. That's a past event. And lastly, will this $200 of uh, GST liability, will it result in an outflow of economic benefits in the future? The answer is yes. At some point, the business will have to pay money to the government to settle that GST liability. So that's what makes it a liability. Let's just change the question now and say, well, why is this not a revenue? A revenue must be an inflow of economic benefits. Is that 
actually true in this case with GST? It actually is. The business does have an inflow of economic benefits here. It's got $200 of money. That is an inflow of economic benefits. So that is true. Has this GST either increased an asset or decreased the liability? It has increased an asset. It's increased cash here. That's an asset. Cash has gone up. So that is actually true. So at this point, this could be a revenue. So the reason it's not is because of the last criteria, which is a revenue must ultimately increase owner's equity. We have not increased owner's equity here. Why not? Why is that not true? Why is this GST not a revenue? It's all to do with our accounting equation. Let's just look at our GST collected and the cash entry here. Here's our accounting equation. Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. So we've got $200 of assets going up, which is this entry here. We've also got a liability going up called GST clearing. But for this to be revenue, we'd need to have owner's equity go up. Now, we haven't got any owner's equity going up just with regard to this $200. The effect on owner's equity is zero. So because the effect on owner's equity is zero, we have to say this is not going to be a revenue. This is not true. It does, though, however, meet the three criteria of a liability. So long story short, we never want to see revenues, uh, sorry, GST recorded as revenues or expenses. It's always going to be a liability, or if we end up paying too much GST, it could be an asset. But we never want to see it in the income statement with all our other revenues and our expenses.